over to Galatians chapter 3 and Proverbs uh, chapter 10. And we're just going to dive in because I've got, I'm looking at all my scriptures and I'm thinking, which ones can I, you know, leave out? And I'm th I don't think any of them I want to leave out, but you know, we can only be here so long. But we're still ministering on uh, the subject of uh, truths about God, our provider. Isn't it good to know that about him? <laughs> you know, I, I love the word and just how it's so descriptive of, of God. I call them pictures, you know, but you see him as healer. You see him as um, giver of life, giver of peace. You see him as the way maker. You see him as the God of the breakthrough. I mean, there's all of these facets about God and there's all these pictures in the word that teach us. I mean, if, if all we had was the word God, you know what I mean? We wouldn't see fully. You know what I mean? We wouldn't see fully and we wouldn't know where to uh, reach out with our faith. But when we see in the scriptures, amen, that he's a healer, hallelujah, with our faith, we reach out to receive that. When we see that he's the God that, that, that gives peace, that passes all understanding, with our faith, we reach out to receive yeah. that. And I am just so thankful that he is our provider. He is our provider. That is an established truth in the Word of God because you see it over and over and over. And we've been looking at a lot of these accounts of how God provided. He provided supernaturally in some, you know, instances that God continuously all throughout the scriptures provided for his people. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. Amen. He is still a God that provides for us. Amen. And I know people get a little, oh, you know, we're talking about money. and we're talk Yes, we're talking about money. Because God cares about every part of your life. Amen. It's religion that tells you that he doesn't. It's religion that tells you that he just cares about you going to heaven. I'm so glad I'm on my way to heaven. I'm so glad that I'm not going to hell. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. But I don't have to experience lack in this life until I get to heaven. He didn't just provide for me there. He made provision for us here in the here and now. Amen. He doesn't expect us to fulfill his plan with nothing. Amen. He's called us to things and he will provide for us. And so we have to look at these things. Uh, I didn't really intend to be on it this long, but the more I'm on it, I can see faith rising. And, and we, have to, we have to hear it so our faith will go that direction and reach that direction. Amen. So we've looked at a lot of things. We've looked at how he's a good shepherd that feeds. We've talked about how God is a God that takes care of his own. Isn't that wonderful to know that he values you as his son, as his daughter? And he, and he makes provision and takes care of you. It's just so good, so good to know that. Amen. God is, we talked about how God is able to increase you or enlarge you in the midst of bad financial circumstances. You can look up at God and say, enlarge me. <laughs> Amen. Increase me. Amen. In the midst of distress, in the midst of famine, you can do that. We talked about how God is able to do so much more for you, more than you can do for yourself, more than man can do for you. We're going to touch on that just a little bit tonight. We talked about how God can supply for you in supernatural ways. God's not limited to the natural. Look in the scriptures. Manna came from heaven. Water came out of a rock. He supplied supernaturally for the widows, for the prophets. Ravens came to feed 
the prophet. Those are all supernatural instances. The axe head, you know, came up to the surface and, and, you know, iron doesn't float. But when God's involved in something, amen, supernatural things begin to take place. He fed the 5,000. Jesus is a supernatural provider for you and I. And then we left off here last week. We talked about this, and I, I, <laughs> I, I really didn't think we were going to just continue on with this, but it just really hasn't left me. We talked about how God has placed a blessing on you. The blessing of the Lord is on your life. There's a power. Listen, we, we, you know, we look at the scripture, it talks about how he's given us the power to get wealth. That is talking about the blessing. The blessing of God is on your life. The blessing of the Lord has been placed on you. It's really powerful to do something in your life. There's a work that the blessing is supposed to work in your life. And we looked at Abraham. We looked at the children of Israel. The blessing of the Lord brings multiplication. It brings increase. It brings substance. It brings wealth. That's what it's designed to do. In your life, God gave it to you. God don't do things for no reason. Come on. Come he doesn't do anything just to do it. There's a purpose. There's a calling. There's, there's something, there's an assignment with the blessing in our life. And so we, we stopped uh, last week in, and we, we were talking about that. But I want to go a little further with that. Um, Galatians 3 did I tell you where to go? Galatians 3 and Proverbs 10. We're, we're going to open at those two uh, openings together. Galatians 3, we looked at that last week. Let's look at it again. It says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is re written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing... The blessing, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. How? Through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so when you got born again, you, hallelujah, so many things happened to us when we got saved. It, it takes our entire it probably will take all of eternity to figure it all out before God can just reveal to, to us what happened when we got saved. But one of the things is we got put in Christ. And when we got put in Christ, the blessing of the Lord came on you and I. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Amen. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. That's not a feeling. That's not a religious term or, you know, lingo, you know, that we have, you know, the Christian lingo that we have in the church. I'm blessed. No, it is real. It is a power that God placed in my life when I got saved, when I got in Christ Jesus, I didn't have to give an offering for it. I didn't have to pray for it. I didn't have to beg for it. I didn't have to get in a ministry line for it. It came when I was placed in Christ Jesus at the new birth. It came in Jesus Christ. And I am blessed. And there's a power on my life, amen, that is intended to work a work. What is that work? It's intended to work the same work that it worked in Abraham's life, that it worked in the children of Israel's life. If you read over there, we looked over there last week, it brought them uh, material wealth. Uh, for Abraham, it brought silver, gold, cattle, uh, children of Israel brought houses to them. They ate 
without any scarceness. No lack. Amen. It brought multiplication to everything that they had. It's a power. It's a power that works in you as you believe. Everything is received by faith. That's why we're talking about this. That's why, you know, we have to be taught who we are in Christ and what we have. What we have in Him. And one of the things you have in Him is the blessing. And so we understand that, that we can, uh, that we can, we can claim that in our life and say, you know what, I am blessed. The blessing, the blessing is working in my life. The power of God is working in my life, bringing multiplication and increase, amen, into my life. I believe that. I receive that by faith. What else does the blessing do? Well, we're going to look at some, we're going to look, I mean, there's a lot. And I really, I'm kind of, you know, getting that little scratching that we probably need to take a service and talk about more things that the blessing does in our life. I mean, it's a power at work in you when you believe. See, a lot of people don't even know that, that, that what's on them. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people did, would hear a message like this and they think, ah, you don't think, you know. You know, they're just satisfied with the revelation that they're, they're on their way to heaven. But I'm telling you, there's so much more. God covenanted with things with us. Amen. We have a covenant ratified by the blood of Jesus. There's things in that covenant. But we also have this blessing, this power that's supposed to be working in our life as we believe. And so we know that it works in that way, that it brings multiplication, it brings increase, it brings material uh, wealth into our life. But another thing that it does is it, it causes things to happen in our life that's beyond our ability. Does that make sense? A lot of people refer to it as favor. It is the favor of God. It's also the blessing. It's a power. It's a power, folks, that has been placed on your life for this reason. And so we need to understand this so that we know what to expect. Amen. So the blessing will do more for you than what you can do for yourself. You know, the scripture talks about how everything you put your hand to will what? Prosper. It will increase. What is that? That's the blessing at work in your life. And so what you do in life, what you uh, put your hand to, your calling, your assignment, the things that, that you give yourself to, amen, it will, it will produce more, amen. The, the blessing on your life will take it further than what you could ever do on your own. Hallelujah. Don't you love that? <laughs> the blessing causes us to live in this way. People say, well, that's just not fair. Well, it's the blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's something that we get to enjoy in God. All right, Proverbs 10. Are you over there? Let's really dig in. That was, that was my intro. <laughs> Long intro. But we kind, we kind of got to see where we're going, okay? Let's look at this blessing and how it, how it works this way in our life. All right. So Proverbs 10 and verse 22 says, The blessing. Again, it's not a blessing. We're talking about the blessing. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing that Abraham walked in. The blessing that the children of Israel walked in. The blessing, hallelujah, that's on you and I because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, look at this, it maketh rich. 
Now, a lot of religious people will say, well, you know, that's talking about spiritual riches. Yes, we have spiritual riches, absolutely. But no, the blessing of the Lord is not limited to spiritual riches. We saw that in the life of, you see, it works the same way. Same blessing working the same way. They didn't just experience spiritual riches. They experienced material riches. Amen. Rich is not a bad word. It's a Bible word. Amen. It's a word for us. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. Man, just meditate on that for a whole day. The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. I'm blessed. And the blessing of the Lord is working in my life. It's doing what it was designed to do. It's doing the work that God intended for it to do in my life. It makes, it makes me rich. Hallelujah. It maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow. Now that word is really important. We're going to be really digging into that word tonight. Sorrow. He adds no sorrow with it. The, the word sorrow there, one of the main definitions of that is toil. He adds no toil with it. Now I'm going to read this to you from the Good News Translation. Proverbs 10.22, Good News Translation says this, It is the Lord's blessing that makes you wealthy. Hard work can make you no richer. The blessing of the Lord is what makes you wealthy. Hard work can make you no richer. So we're talking about this, this, this dynamic of the blessing. It causes you to multiply. It causes you to increase. That's the work. But it also causes what you do, what you put your hand to, to prosper, to go further. You know what I'm saying? It will, it will do more for you than what you can do for yourself. Amen. Work is something that we can do for ourselves, right? Hard work. Hard work is something that, I mean, you don't even have to be a Christian to be a hard worker, right? You know, I was thinking about this. I've, you know, I'm from the Midwest, and um, it's probably changed. I haven't lived in Oklahoma for 30 years, but when I lived there, like everybody, all my, you know, my family, my dad owns a sawmill, you know, they work hard. You know what I mean? There weren't a lot of desk jobs, I'll put it that way, in, in where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of my friends, their dads were farmers, roofers, you know, like hard workers. Like, they broke a sweat. <laughs> like, every day, they were breaking a sweat and working really hard. And there was a lot of pride, or, you know, people were proud of hard work. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, there really was. There was a sense of pride that people had that, you know what, we work really hard. And I think, I think it's good to have a sense of satisfaction to where, you know, you're not ashamed. You know what I'm saying? That, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not lazy and I'm disciplined and I'm diligent, you know, and I put my hand to the, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But there can almost be... <laughs> this thing where people take credit. You know what I'm saying? People, you know, and I've heard that a lot. You know, we have something because, you know, I get up at the crack of dawn and I work hard and that's, you know, blah, 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 blah. So funny, you find people either, either in one ditch or the other. Isn't that the truth? Like it's very hard to find people like in the middle of the road somewhere. But, you know, you've got, <laughs> you know, you've got even Christians that, you know, attribute their blessings to how hard they've worked, you know? And then you've got these Christians over here that don't want to work. They're not interested in, 
you know, any of that. They just want to believe God and, you know, and quote scriptures and that kind of stuff. And so I, I'm going to, I'm going to share, I'm just going to share about four scriptures with you real quickly. I'm not, I'm not camping here, but I thought, you know, we do need to look at this side of the coin because work is biblical. Yeah. If you don't put your hand to anything, the blessings got nothing to, you know what I'm saying? To put any supernatural on. Work is very important. It really is. I'm, I don't want to just ramble on. Let, let me give you some really good scriptures. And say, I love to work. I love work. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's the will of God. You know, that, that we work. Amen. Let me just, let me read some scriptures. We're, we're going somewhere, so just hang with me. Proverbs 10, 4 says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. It's real interesting there. It's, it, I mean, it's clear that if you work, that leads to having something. That even works for people in the world. You know, if you, if you work, you're going to have something. But if you're lazy or if you won't work, what does that lead to? That leads to not having anything. You know what I'm saying? If you, how, if you want to be poor, don't do anything. Proverbs 13, 4 says this, The soul of the sluggard, notice this, he desireth, but he has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. That word fat there means prosperous. So even the one who's lazy wants things, but their laziness gets in the way of them having anything. But if you're diligent, there's something there for, to, you know what I'm saying, for, to, to bring prosperity into your hand, for you to have something. I don't know, I love these scriptures. It, you know, it's not good to be lazy. It, it really isn't. It, it is not good to be lazy. It's not, it's, it's a horrible testimony. We need to be, we need to be there early. We need to leave late. We need to be, you know what I'm saying, one of those that has a really good work ethic. That, I'm telling you, people respect that. They do. And sometimes you have to teach this to the younger generation because, you know, especially through COVID, people got money for nothing and they wanted to keep that going. Well, it, you, you, that's not even Bible. You know, we've pastored a long time. I know people that are like in their early 20s just trying to find everything they can to get on disability. And I'm thinking, why would you want to live like that? Well, that is lazy. That is lazy. It's not a good attribute to have. God has called you to be diligent at working something, Amen. putting your hand to something. I know that's not real popular, but I've got two more scriptures, so just hang on. We want a good testimony. Amen. Second Th or Proverbs 14, 23 says this, In all labor, in all labor, there is profit. That's amazing. In all labor, no matter what kind of labor that you do, there will be a return on it. That's good. There will be increase. If you're looking to increase, one of the places you might need to start is getting a job. Come on. You know what I'm saying? And I understand there's some people that are at a place in their life, maybe, you know, they're dealing with physical things or what, you understand what I mean. But I mean, you've got able-bodied people in the body of Christ that don't want to work. And that's not the life that God has called you to live. That is not the will of God. Amen. Let, let's look at this, this next one and then we're going to move on. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says this, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. What, what, is, what is the thing that God is, is saying here in this passage? Everybody needs to be making a contribution. 
God has blessed you. Hallelujah. God has blessed you. God has covenanted with you a covenant of prosperity so that you can put your hand to something and it prosper and then something come into your hands to where now you're able to contribute. You, you, have, you have one of two people in every group, family, a church, a nation. You've got contributors and then you have consumers. You know what I'm saying? You've got people that contribute and you have people that consume. They just, they're just always thinking about how they can take. Here's the problem. If you have more consumers then you have contributors. It's not going to last. That, that is totally unsustainable. I'm talking about in a church. You know, if everybody just wants to come and take and, you know, I just want to come and receive. Well, we need you to do more than that. We need you to come and contribute. We need you to come and put your hand to something and, and, and you know what I'm saying, serve so that somebody else can receive. Yes, amen. You know what I'm saying? It's sad, but you just have more, more people coming wanting to consume than people coming with the mind to contribute. Yes. But see, we're blessed to be a blessing. That's what that blessing does. That's what he did. He said, I'm going to bless you. Remember, we talked about this last week. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing, so that you can hold the cup of water. You can give the cup. You'll have something to give somebody that's thirsty. You'll have something to clothe the person that's naked. You'll have something to give to the person in need. Amen. God forbid that we ever take on the mentality of the world of just take, 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 consume, 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 consume. God wants more for you. God wants you to be in a position to where you can contribute. That's right. Amen. That's why he said, so if you don't work, you don't eat. Amen. So I need to move on. Um, we can look at those scriptures and we can, we can automatically know without any question that work is biblical yes. and that it is the will of God for us to work. Okay, here's, here's the dilemma. You want to hear the dilemma? Here's the dilemma. Come on. As diligent and as hard as we can work, is that enough? for us to really walk in everything that God has for us. No, it's not enough. It's necessary, we need to be diligent. We see that, we need to put our hand to something. But we also need the blessing working Amen. in our lives, Amen. the favor of God, Amen. the power of God, Amen. Yeah working through us, working, working in our life to, to cause what we do to be more productive, more successful. Hallelujah. Take it further than what we can take it. And I'm telling you, when you serve God and you understand this, and I mean, when you say I'm blessed, you understand it, you mean it, and you know what you're expecting of that blessing to do in your life, you will see God doing this in your life all the time. You look at things that happen in your life and you're thinking, that wasn't me. I'm not even educated enough to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? Or what I'm walking in, it took other people 10 years in my profession to get this far. This, you understand what I'm saying? Listen, we got to have faith in this. We got to believe that this power is at work in our yes, life. Amen. So go to Genesis 3. I think I've got time. I think I've got time. Y'all get anything out of this? Isn't it good to know that you're blessed? And that's more than just a cliche or a song. <laughs> We're talking about a power 
that God placed on your life that's working. Yeah. Whoo, glory to God. Ooh, I'm interested in it. All right, so you're in Genesis 3. I, I'm going to just read. There's some interesting things in um, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and then I'll join you in Genesis 3. But let, let me just read uh, to you a, a few things because I want you to see that you need the blessing. There, there's a big difference between living your life, working every day and putting your hand to stuff, and you just kind of seeing yourself as on your own without the help of God, without the favor of God. You know, you're just plugging through and then working and putting your hand to stuff with that blessing. There's a big difference. There is a big difference. So I want you to, I want you to just listen to me when I read to you a couple of verses from Genesis 1. Uh, and then uh, one from Genesis 2. I know you're in Genesis 3. Genesis 1, 28, listen to this. This is talking about Adam and Eve, okay? Listen to this. And God blessed them. What did he do? Blessed he blessed them. More than a feeling, what is this blessing? It's the power of God. It's the power of God that brings increase, multiplication, amen, causes what you do to go beyond you know, what you can do for yourself. God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. See, he didn't say this to them until he did what? He blessed them. He blessed them. They can't do this without the what? The blessing, without the power of God. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we see that in, in chapter one. That's just so powerful. There's a lot in there. We really don't have time to go into all that tonight, but I would love to. There's, that's rich. So he blessed them. Verse or chapter two, Genesis two. I'm going to read Genesis two fifteen. I'm skipping over some things, but it's okay. We'll start in verse 15. And the Lord God took the man, talking about Adam. Remember, he blessed him, right? He put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So, so now he has a job. That's good. So he's blessed. And now he has a job. He has this assignment. What is his assignment? He works in the garden, dressing it and keeping it. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I thought this was kind of comical when I was thinking about this today. It couldn't have been that hard because there was no curse. You know what I mean? I hate working in the garden. My mom loves gardening and oh my gosh, it was awful as a kid to have to work getting the dirt and I'm thinking oh, I'm not eating this stuff that's my thing if it's had dirt on it for half its life I don't want to eat it I really don't there might still be some dirt in it I loathe it I did not like it I, but you know you're pulling weeds and you're just you know we had we had 11 acres in our front yard yeah raking and I hate death on <laughs> landscapes. It's awful. It's a lot of work. So it couldn't have been that hard because nothing's dying and there's no weeds. Everything's in total perfection. So I guess he just like moved stuff around and tried colors together. Or I don't know what he did, but it had to have been fun and fulfilling to him. Amen. But he didn't just, you know, sit out and, you know, uh, hang out and tan, you know, suntan under the trees or something like that. He had a job. So just like us, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. God's blessed us. And we, we work and put our hand to things with the blessing. Okay. Now look at um, Genesis 3. 17. This is after sin came in. 
Okay, we're, you know, so what we read before was before they sinned, before the curse came in. So Genesis 3.17, now the curse has come into the world and God is informing them of how this is going to change their life. Because I, I don't think they had a clue. They didn't even have a clue how this act was going to turn their world upside down. So listen to this, Genesis 3.17. <clears throat> so God's saying, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened, and to the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. <laughs> Cursed. Hmm. Cur- I mean, they're sitting here thinking, you know, trying to process everything he's saying, and they're like, you know, cursed. You know, that's a new word. Cursed. Because all we know is that we're blessed. <laughs> I thought we were blessed. No. Cursed is the ground, look at this, for thy sake. So what was, what, was, what was that entailing? That's what he did. That was his job, remember, to work in the garden. And so he's saying what you do now with that ground. Isn't that amazing that the curse affected even how the ground was going to produce? Like the ground under their feet was changing. Because the curse had now come in. Uh, let, stay where you're at. Can I just read you uh, Genesis 5, 29? Because this, this verse here kind of gives a little bit of insight about how the ground was going to work differently. Genesis 5, 29. This wasn't too long after the curse came in. He called his name Noah saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. So now that the curse is there, they're going to have to work that ground hard. They're going to have to toil now to get that ground to yield something, to get that ground to produce. See, that's the difference between work. See, we saw Adam working with the blessing. But then he's got to still do the same work, but now that he doesn't have the blessing, it's toil now. See, there's a difference between work and toil. Work, I find work satisfying. Mm-hmm. Don't you, I love to work. I really do. I love to work. I like to be productive. I find it so like the most awesome feeling at the end of the day when I can look at, you know, unless it's a day off. But you know what I'm saying? Look at and I'm saying, I, praise the Lord. We got a lot done today. We got a lot done for the kingdom. We got a lot done for the church. Praise God. Amen. But toil is different. You hate it. You hate it because you're having to work so hard to get something to happen. You know, it's like you're working your brains out. And it's still not enough. We have been redeemed from that. That's the good news. Is that we are not cursed. We are blessed. Woo! We have the blessing. So we get to do what we do, fulfill the calling that God has for us, work our job, put our hand, and know that the blessing of the Lord, hallelujah, is on what we do, and it's causing it to be more productive, more fruitful, take us further, you know what I'm saying, than where we could take ourselves. 
Isn't this awesome? Amen. I'm blessed. God wants us to walk in prosperity and more than enough and eat our bread without any scarceness or lack. Hallelujah. So much that he blessed us in Christ Jesus and this is what it will do in our life. I love this. I love this. Um, he goes on to say this. Well, let's continue in Genesis 3. Let's look at verse 18. He said, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. So and that's interesting. So before the curse, there were no thorns. Remember that stupid song, every, thorn, every rose has its thorn. Every rose, whatever. I'm an 80s kid. That's from the 80s. Had a flashback. Well, the roses didn't have thorns then. No thistles, no weeds, nothing dead. That all came in with the curse. Thank God we're redeemed from all of that. Amen. He said, thorns and thistles shall it bring to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face. Thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, and for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And so what I'm wanting to bring out here is, is you know, we, we got to see what we have and what it's supposed to do, what we can expect it to do. We labor, yes, but we labor with the blessing. You can see where they labored with the blessing, they labored without the blessing, and there was a huge difference. Work with the blessing is satisfying, fruitful, productive, and a joy. Working or laboring without the blessing is nothing but toil. I don't have to toil. You're not called to toil. Can, uh, go, go to Matthew 6. I hope you're getting something out of this. I love this. I love this. We are redeemed from toiling. We are redeemed from having to make a way for ourselves and make things produce. Yes, we work hard because of diligence, because that's part of our testimony. Amen. That we've got health, we've got breath in our lungs, we've got a calling on our life, we've got giftings and gracings and things that God has called us to do so that we can increase and multiplication can come to us. But we are not called to work ourselves into the ground trying to make a dollar. Come on. Amen. I've, I've, this is kind of a, a new phrase that you hear a lot of people say, well, I'm self-made. I'm self-made. <laughs> Whatever. That don't work for anybody. Amen. I'm not self-made. I'm in Christ. And I have a blessing on my life because of Him. And it does more for me than I can do for myself. Amen. Uh, I, Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Um, let's look at verse 27. There's a lot of places I want to go. Matthew 6, look at this. This is a familiar verse. It says, which of you by taking thought, remember this passage, yeah. how God takes care of us? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why ye take thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Look at this, how they grow. They what? They toil not. They toil not. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love this. Neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more... Hallelujah. What does the blessing do? It does more for you than what you can do for yourself. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? That, you know, that scripture, when you read it, I love that passage. You know, it tells you, you know, worrying ain't the answer. But I'm telling you, when you read this, you see this also that toiling is not the answer. The answer is looking to God, your provider, who will take care of you and his power is on you to work a work in your life to where he will do more for you than what you can do for yourself. He is the answer. The blessing is the answer. Amen. We just got to recognize this about our lives and declare it out of our mouth. I'm blessed and the blessing is working in my life. The blessing is working in my life. It's doing things for me. You know, I was thinking today, I can look over my life and see places where God totally arranged things. He totally and completely arranged it. And I just stepped right into it. You know what I'm saying? It's like we just, you know, we were believing for certain things and, and you know, and just, just expecting God to do certain things. And then one day, without scratching and fighting and trying to be blessed, God arranged things, right time, right place, right people, right everything, and you step right into it. You step right into a blessing. You're like, oh my gosh, God did this. That's the blessing working in your life. The blessing will bring people to you, uh, opportunities to you, increase to you, uh, wisdom to you for things. I, I, I am always, and he's been, he's been in heaven for quite some time, but how many of y'all remember Paul and Jan Crouch? Yes. Paul, TBN. Yes. My family, they were, they were TBN partners for decades. You know, TBN, we had all the, you know, they'd send you the little trinkets. We had the night lights. We had the bookmarkers. We had the things on the refrigerator. I mean, TBN was everywhere. because We were TBN partners. But I always loved hearing his testimony about how he started TBN. I mean, that was like cutting edge. The, you know, the satellite and everything. We got a satellite just for TBN. I, we lived out in the country. We didn't have cable. We had rabbit ears on a TV that got NBC, ABC, CBS, and PBS. That's it. If it wasn't on any of those stations, you weren't watching it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were just, you just out of luck. Because we lived way out in the country and just boondocks. So everybody, a lot of my friends were in the same boat. You know, we, you know, we liked all of our friends that lived in town because they could get more than what we could get. But when TBN came along, my mom and dad went and bought a satellite, probably about the size of this room. Those things were humongous and put it right outside my bedroom door. That thing got hit by lightning probably like four or five times. I'm not kidding. It was, it was, it was humongous. But <laughs> that was really cutting edge at that time. And when God put that in his heart, he did not know how to do it. But the blessing of the Lord gave him the wisdom. It, I mean, it's just really remarkable how he went from point A to where he, where he went with TBN. And I mean, untold numbers of people have come into the kingdom of God through TBN. No, I, I remember you know, watching TBN, there'd be that phone number at the bottom. 
you know, 24 hours a day. Yeah. People up in the middle of the night, you know, in despair or whatever, you know, going through the channels, and there would be somebody singing about Jesus Amen. with a phone number at the bottom yeah. and a prayer partner on the other end of that line. I mean, man, what God did, but He did not know how to do it. But the blessing brought everything that they needed to do that and the wisdom and the money and the equipment. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Be encouraged in that. There's a power working in your life if you will just believe. It may not all show up at your front porch overnight, but that's not what, we're not moved by that anyway. We have faith. In God, we have faith in His power. We have faith in, in, in this blessing that is on us. Amen. Can I just read to you? Oh, I hate looking at that. Let, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, can, can we come back to this? Let's just come back to this. Um, but I want to read to you at least one account. Um, Luke 5. Go to Luke 5. And we'll end with this verse. Because I know everybody doesn't want to be here all night. But I'm really enjoying this. Come on. I'm telling you, I'm really enjoying this. I've enjoyed this yeah, series. This so was like an accidental series, if there ever was one. But you know, God just kept, God just kept stirring it in my heart, and I, I just couldn't get away from it. And it's just been a blessing. Luke 5, let's, let's look at this account. There's, there's an account here of people that were trying to do things on their own. You know what I'm saying? And then the help of God stepped in. You know what I'm saying? The favor of God stepped in. The power of God stepped in. Luke 5 and verse 4. This is, this is the account when they were fishing all night. Remember, they were bringing in nothing. Uh, verse 7. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. We have been working as hard as we can and we cannot get any fish. Nothing's working. I mean, we, don't think we've been lazy here, Jesus. We've been working as hard as we can. We've toiled all night, and we have taken nothing. Nothing's happening. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. What's he saying? He goes, I'm going to let you get involved in this situation. I'm going to receive your help. You know what we do when we say, I'm blessed? I'm, Lord, I thank you that I'm blessed. I thank you that the blessing of God is on my life. And God, I believe you that it is working in my life just like it worked in Abraham's life. Just even Lot. Lot, Lot didn't even have the blessing placed on him, but just by association he increased. How much more do we have? Lord, I believe in that blessing. I say that it's working in our life in Jesus' name. What are you doing? You're inviting the help of God. You're inviting the power of God to help you in your finances. Yeah. Don't be one of those people, I got this, I got this, I got it, I got it, I got it. Self-made. <laughs> Ugh, stop it. God. You're being ridiculous. Yeah. Amen. But no, what did they say? We're going we're gonna to do what you say. We're going to receive your help. And when they had done this, verse 6, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net. It broke. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ships that they should come help them. And they came and filled both of the ships so that they began to sink. That is increase. That is increase. 
You go from nothing to your nets can't even hold it and you got two ships now that's trying to hold it all in and the, <laughs> they're, they're like <laughs> going under because of the weight of all of the fish. Amen. Only, listen, they've been working hard all night and they got nothing. But look at the increase that comes when God gets involved, when His power gets involved, His wisdom gets involved. You see what I'm saying? You are not on your own. So many Christians, I think, feel like God doesn't care about that or He's not interested in that. No, 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 no. That could not be further from the truth. He cares about you. He cares about you. He cares about you. And He gave you Jesus, but also in Jesus came a power. Came the blessing of the Lord. And it's on you for an intended purpose for increase, multiplication. Come on now. Silver, gold, houses, lands, no lack, no scarceness. Amen. Multiplication on everything you got. And help concerning what you put your hand to to cause increase to come to that. Amen. I tell you, when you get up in the morning, you you just ought to look at your hands and say, I speak increase over everything I put my hand to today. There's a power. The blessing of the Lord is on my life. The blessing is working things. Favor of God's working in my life because of that blessing. Amen. I'm super productive. I increase Mm -hmm. at my job. I increase in what I do. Amen. Amen. We're King's kids. So I was saying earlier, we're not nobodies. We're King's kids. It's time for us to start thinking that way and believing in what God put on us. Amen. Because we are blessed. We're sure not cursed. We're not living under the curse. We are living under a blessing and we are living with a blessing on our life. Do you get anything out of that tonight? We may have to come back. We may have to come back to that because there's a lot of scripture I didn't get to share. And I just think that's worth knowing. Amen. Because it's something we do every day. You know, work and, and, you know, putting our hand to think, we do that every single day. We ought to know about the blessing that's on us to help us, to help us succeed, to help us prosper in what we do. Amen. Isn't God just so good? He thought of everything. He thought of everything. And everything He did for us is just so good. Amen. Why don't we just thank Him that we're blessed? Lord, I thank You for placing Your blessing on my life. Thank You for doing that. Thank You for blessing Your people, blessing Your church. There's a blessing on this church. There's a blessing on these households. And that blessing is working in Jesus' name. It's bringing increase, multiplication. It's bringing wealth. It's bringing fruitfulness, productivity. Hallelujah. Favor. Hallelujah. We praise you for that. We thank you for that. You are so good. You are so good to us. We thank you that you prosper us in our way. And we give you praise and thanks for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said... Amen. Amen. Well, God is so good. We get, we get more and more just deeper in that revelation. Every time we open the book, we just, man, He is so good. So, so good. Amen. 
Uh, before we go, if you're watching tonight and you don't know Jesus and you've never been saved, please pray this prayer with me. You know, things are wrapping up. Jesus is coming back very soon. You want to be ready to meet the Lord. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I call on Jesus right now to save me. I need saving. I can't save myself. I can't help myself. But Jesus has come to save my life, to redeem me from destruction, to pull my feet out of the pit and set my feet on a rock. Thank you, Jesus, for cleansing me with your blood, washing away all my sin, shortcomings, all of the past. It's forgiven. It's under the blood. It's gone. <laughs> and a new man has been born. I'm brand new. I'm born again. I'm a new creature. And all things are passed away. And behold, all things are made new. Thank you for giving me newness of life. A brand new start, Jesus. I receive that. I believe your word that says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I call on you, Jesus, and I am saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me new life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer, please write us. We want to pray for you. Believe God over you. Send you some materials that will help you to understand salvation and what's just happened in your life. What's changed about your future. You now have eternal life with God because of Jesus Christ, because you called on Him to save you. Welcome to the family of God. Amen, amen, amen. And then we want to receive our tithes and offerings. I don't mean to rush it, but um, anyway, praise the Lord. I'm a little long-winded. I don't know. Maybe we need another Wednesday night preacher. and Maybe I need Sunday mornings. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're both long-winded, but there's just so many good things in the Word to share. Amen. Amen. So uh, ushers are in the aisle to give you an offering envelope. You can also text to give 84321. 84321. Just a few announcements. There will not be in-person Wednesday night service next Wednesday. They're having a big festival, Halloween festival, something here. So anyway, we will not be able to meet in person, but you can go online on Thursday and there will be a, a message, amen, that will feed you and minister to you. And then we'll pick back up the following Wednesday night. Daylight Savings is coming. You're going to fall back Saturday, November the 2nd. Amen. So uh, you get an extra hour of sleep. That's always good. Come refreshed, ready to worship God that Sunday morning. Veteran Sundays, November 10th. If you're a veteran, if you could sign up in the lobby, there's something we would like to do for you to honor you that Sunday morning. Um, Youth Fire Conference, December uh, 6th through the 8th in Big Bear Lake. Um, you can see Pastors Martin and Cassandra about that. Super Kids Fall Festival, October the 27th. That's this coming su uh, Sunday. Wow. They're having a fall festival. They can come to church in their favorite PJs, enjoy food, arts, crafts, and other fun activities. Have your kids here this Sunday to enjoy them. Youth Bible study every Wednesday night. Christian Foundation, Sunday at 9 a.m. We have a night of elegance, November the 8th, and you can get tickets from Miss Janet tonight. She can help you with that. $25, that includes your dinner. That's really good, dinner. And then we're gonna have a concert from our very own Cameron Evans. I mean, this is a real treat and it's formal. We're dressing up and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, you know, sometimes you just kind of need that little push to get into the holiday, you know, spirit. And sometimes it's just nice to do something different as a church family, you know, just kind of get all fussied up and gussied up and come together, have dinner together. And I tell you, enjoy one of the best talents that, I, I, that I've ever seen. 
we are so blessed. We are so blessed yes, to to be to be uh, blessed every Sunday with the talent of Brother Cameron. He is he's just amazing. And so uh, be a part of that. That's going to be a lot of fun. But you got to get your tickets in advance, so because we got to let the caterer know. So uh, be sure to get that uh, in the lobby on Sunday morning. We love you. Shake hands with 5,000 people. Tell them the Lord is good to me and I am blessed. And we'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless you.